Good afternoon, good Arab Shabbos, everyone. I hope you're doing well. We're going to do a couple of quick Rashis from uh, towards the end of the Parsha and the sixth Aliyah. We're actually on the right day today in terms of our Rashis. Uh, towards the end of the Parsha, we move from the Kohanim, the clothing of the Kohanim, the initiation of the Kohanim, to a discussion of the Korban Tamid, the daily sacrifices in the Mishkan. Um, famous Pasuk, the morning sacrifice, the evening sacrifice, uh, which is, of course, referred to uh, by us as the Korban Tamid, uh, the, the uh, Tamid sacrifice, which uh, comes from this previous Pasuk right over here, where it says, Shnaim Layom Tamid, you should bring two every day. Now, I just feel like a broken record because I've been talking about Tamid all week in various contexts here on the Rashi a couple of times already. Um, in my Wednesday night, Chabura, I don't know where else, all over the place. Uh, but of course, Tamid, we've talked about, comes up many, many times in Truma, Tzava, comes up by the Shulchan, it comes up by the Menorah, it comes up by the Choshen, it comes up by the Tzitz, it comes up all over the place. And as we noted yesterday, um, Tamid means different things, different places, except for the Tzitz, where you have to find a really creative reading. It mostly means either consistent or constant. Constant, like in the case of the showbreads, consistent, like in the case of the lighting of the Menorah. So over here, Korban Tamid, this is one of the proof texts uh, for what Rashi said in Parshas Truma, is Tamid miyom el yom. Lo yafsik yom bain time. Here it means consistent. It sends from one day to the next. Every day, tamid. Doesn't mean you're sacrificing this thing all day long, every single day. It's not constant, but it's consistent every single day without a break. Lo yafsik yom bain time. There's no day that comes to break in between. So that's the meaning of tamid, and why we call it the korban tamid, tamid shel boker, tamid shel bain ha'abayim, um, the morning sacrifice and the evening sacrifice. But the Rashi I really wanted to get to today is another interesting one. It tells us at the very end uh, that as a result of this sacrifice, really God is going to come. His presence is going to come. He's going to speak to us. He's going to meet with us. This morning in Shul, I, I did the Rashi on Iva Eid Lachem Shama, No Aditi Shama, the idea of Vad, we call Moed. A holiday is a Moed. We call the sacred part of the Mishkan, the Ohel Moed, the tent of meeting. The idea of Iva Eid, I will meet with you there. No Aditi Shama, I will meet with you there. All these words, what they have in common with Moed, which is holiday, is the designation of time and space for meeting. That's the core of any relationship, is to designate time and space for each other. God is saying there's a time and a space where we're going to meet up, whatever that means, in a non-physical sense. And that's going to be uh, the solid foundation of our relationship. But in the midst of saying that, God designates a very particular place in the Mishkan. Where is that place? The place where you sacrifice the Olat Tamid, the daily sacrifice, which is the Mizbeach HaNechoshes, the copper Mizbeach, which is on the outside, Pesach Olamoed, by the entrance to the Olamoed. Asher iva eid lachem shama. That's where I'm going to appear to you. That's where we're going to meet. That's where I'm going to speak from. So Rashi notes that there's a bit of a contradiction there. He says, yes, Rabbis, that we know that earlier on in Parshas Truma, we read that God speaks to us, v'no'adeti lacha, same exact word here, v'no'adeti shama, v'no'adeti lacha, sham, same exact words, no'adeti shama, no aditi lacha sham. Where is it going to be from? Me al ha kapores, from the top of the cover of the aron between the two kruvim, which is in the kodesh hakodashim. Nowhere near the mizbeach hanachoshes. Nowhere near here. Not even the kodesh, let alone the kodesh hakodashim. It's outside. So how is it possible that God is meeting us there? God is meeting us here. So Rashi raises the question without giving it a great answer, but he raises the question. For the fact that it says he met us on top of the Mizbeach, the place of the Korban Olas Tamid, it might mean that that's where our Kaddish Baruch Hu spoke to Moshe Rabbeinu from the time the Mishkan was built. The Yeshmehem Omer and other rabbis say, no, that's not the place he spoke. No, Aditi just means generally, I'm going to meet you there. But he's speaking from me'al ha-kapores, kapores, like we just saw in the Pasuk. So I don't really have a great answer other than to say that there seems to be a bit of a discrepancy in the Pesukim, unless you read as one general meeting and one specifically speaking, even though we don't even know what God speaking to us means. It means his presence was more felt there. It's hard to know even what that means. 
but there is some question in the Pesukim of how to square away this section, which is so heavily about us meeting, us being together in a space, being on top of the Mizbeah versus being on top of the Aram. Without answering the question, what it speaks to though is the prominence of these two vessels. The Mizbeach and the Aron are the two core elements of the Mishkan. And there's a lot, a lot to say about that. It's much machlokas, the Rambam, the Ramban, the Poskim, Rishonim, about uh, the nature of these two elements and which one is the primary one in the Mishkan and which one is the secondary one in the Mishkan. Even from the Rambam's description in Sefer HaMitzvah of how the mitzvah of the Mizbeach uh, of, the, of the Mishkan goes. Is it separate for the Kalim, the vessels versus the Mishkan? Is it all one mitzvah? All of these conversations surrounding the halachos and mitzvah counts in terms of the Mishkan are related to this question of what's primary, the Mizbeach or the Aron. And if you think about it, they're opposite elements. The Mizbeach is a place where we come and take active part in coming closer to God. We bring the sacrifices. And the Aron is the opposite. The Aron is the space where God comes down to us. It what houses the Torah. God's word to us comes through the Aron. Our act towards God of Korban comes through the Mizbeach. So they're both very central elements. Not surprising that the Torah designates them both as a meeting place. However, you resolve the textual question. They both speak, the, the, the textual problem speaks to the prominence of these two elements, which whichever one is primary, whichever is secondary, they're both definitely more important than the other elements of the Mishkan. And it really highlights the dual nature of our relationship, the two-way street, us coming closer to God and God coming close to us, which is of course the whole point of meeting in the Mishkan to begin with. Thanks everybody and have a wonderful Shabbos. Thank you. You too, Rabbi, and everybody. Thank you. 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 Thank you.